Right, in this video, uh, I'm doing a monkey puzzle bow. Uh, I'm not starting the video till I've got it down this far because up to now there was basically a half an hour of clunky, 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 clunky until I got it round. Uh, the branches were sticking out. I normally would have stuck it on the bandsaw, but I snapped the blade yesterday. So I can't. Um, what I've done when I cut the blank is I cut it straight through the knots because what I want is I want to be able to see the knots from the rim and I'm going to shape the bowl so that the knots kind of swoop down the bowl if I can. Uh, there's a bit of tear out in it. Now this is wet at the moment so I'm going to rough torn it and then I'm going to stick it in the kiln. Um, so I'll film this part of the video, then wait a few weeks, film the second part of the video and put the whole lot together. Right, so I'll just uh, continue going with trying to shape this. A moment, I'm going to rough shape it. Okay, we're done. So we've got those inclusions out of it yet. I do. That's not the shape I'm looking for. I want a much more swoopy shape on it. And so I can safely take that tail stock away now because I want to face off here, mark for the tenon. And I'm going to use a tenon because it's end grain. And then I'll, it will give me a guide as to where to cut. <coughs> right, that will give me a rough idea of where to cut to. Right, so we put the shape in it now. Right, I have the bed of the lathe absolutely covered in um, paste wax so that. Uh, it won't stain up. As I said, this is wet. So I don't take risks with the light. There's no point. Nearly, the other two last again. So I'm just looking for a sweeping curve because what I'm thinking about mostly is what the knots are going to look like on the inside of this bow. Now we take it for the tenon. Right. The tenon's a bit deep, so we'll take a slight little bit off it. Should do it. Flip it around now and we'll fit the inside. Right, and there's that one roughed out. 
right, and we're back out of the kiln. Right, uh, was in the kiln for about a week, and then uh, up on a shelf here, normalising for about another week. Right, so, first thing I'm going to do is face off here. Being end grain, it won't have warped too bad. End grain normally stays kind of straightish. Right, then I'm going to farm the outside first. I need to try to get a bit more of a sweep into it. Right, so now when I'm doing this, I'm going to bring up the tailstock just for support as long as I can. Soft touch in just to protect it a bit. Right, now we have support. Now we'll shape the outside of this. Try and get a bit more of a curve into it, maybe. It's a little bit easier. Speed it up. When you're cutting end grain, don't be expecting to get lovely shavings off. You're not going to get them. What you're going to end up with is sawdust, roughly. Right, let's improve the shape on this. Now I'm not actually shear scraping here, I'm cutting, right, and how you do it, 
is right, right. right. If that's the gouge level, my gouge, the handle of my gouge is down here. It's down very low, right? And I'm riding the bevel here on the side. And I'm cutting with this wing. Right? So I'm actually riding a bevel, but I'm riding that one there. Not this one, that one. Full sweep now. Just there, but it's gonna have the sand out. Right. Now we'll do the inside. And I'll move the camera. Right. Okay. Now, first thing I want to do is sort the rim out to give myself a rim, sh my rim shape. Hmm, this is not like being cut. Hmm, this is quite hard. Right. Try a smaller ball gouge. That one, they put it.
very dusty. Let's see how we're doing. Yeah, nuts are showing around the rim, which is good, because that's what I wanted. I was trying to avoid doing the classic monkey puzzle of showing the nuts in the middle. I'm pretty sure I'm doing the top as well. I think this is good. Yep, we'll keep going. My normal half inch Balgauf didn't seem to like this at all. But the 58 is. No, it's not a 58. That's a half inch. 38, sorry. 38 is working. Nicely. Yeah, it's okay. Now we're starting the bottom. Now, I'm interested to see how this pith reacts. So what I've done is, I uh, before I put it in the kiln, I soaked the pith in thin CA. Because the pith in the middle of a monkey puzzle is basically like a piece of sponge. Thin, so I don't want to go any thinner if I can help it. But the bottom of this is going to tear out like crazy. do is take the lightest cuts I can for a finish cut. To try and negate that. See it there? Terror. The pit looks like it held up. Right now, the lightest cut I can take at that angle is with the negative right scraper. And move center slightly low. Okay, let's try this. Does that give me any better or do we need to push? No, that's actually not bad. It's not great. But Tell you you can't do a push cut with a negative right scraper. You can. 
you've just got to be very very careful doing it right now we'll sand it right. anybody looking for a small drill for sanding my wife got me this one in ikea believe it or not for 25 euro and it's nice and small you can get inside the bowls with it so if you're looking for a cheap drill for sanding 25 quid in ikea right now we'll get to sanding this and i'll be back then right. right i'm just putting on sanding sealer and i swear to god i've never seen a thirstier wood it's literally drinking and when I cleaned it with the Mets, it did the same thing. Just watch this. Gone. In that little section there, that sanding sealer is all gone. It's absolutely... It's very thirsty wood. It's literally just drinking it. So anybody who's gonna do this, I'm gonna use monkey puzzle. It's just something to be aware of. That it's extremely thirsty. I would say I've used the same amount of sanding sailor on this that I would normally use on three bolts. And same with mats for cleaning it. I was cleaning it. It's quite difficult to get uh, an even covering on it because it's drinking it so quickly. Um, right. That was just something interesting that popped up, so I just thought I'd stick that into the video. So there's a heads up for anybody using monkey puzzle. It'll drink stuff on you. <coughs> now I'll let that dry and then you actually grit it and I'll be back then and we're back usual finish of Yorkshire grit and Hampshire sheen high glass uh, just popping it off now Not too bad, not super shiny, but not too bad. Still seems to be some raised grain in, it, in places. Since it's weird wood. I do like the knots though around the rim rather than the classic monkey puzzle shape. It's different. Right, we'll take it off and do the base. I was wondering what the knocking was. Did right you hear it? Hear it there. It's the pith. Remember, the pith in this is soft. So I think at this speed, I'm kind of getting a bang off of it. There it is again. Walk through 
drills so I'll let you do. Can't spark, it's not gonna spark that way. Yeah, there's the pip, that's what the bang was. Yep, on the low. So, okay. Not pretty, so we will use the Mega Brake Scraper to see if we can sort out some of that grain. Yeah, that helped. Okay, right. Now we'll just sand and finish the base. Not pretty. Not pretty. Okay, then and we'll take her off and have a look. Right, I'm have a bit of dust on her from sanding the base. There we go, a bit of a different monkey puzzle though. Tilt the camera a bit. Right, right there we go, a bit of a different monkey puzzle belt. I actually like that part, but to be honest, it's the first time I've worked with monkey puzzle. And I don't like the wood. I am not too fond of the wood at all. I don't like the look of it. Yeah, it's an interesting wood to work with. But, uh, let's put it this way, there's nicer woods out there. But that's just my opinion. Some people love the stuff. And that's their right. And if they love it, they love it. Okay, right. So that's that one, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.